Hey there folks, my name's Hayden. I am your board game buddy, at least I'd like to be. Today we are looking at Cover Your Assets, how to play this game, and maybe a few tips for you as well at the end if you stick around for that. If you do like this content or want to support me, please do like and subscribe. It helps out a bunch. Let's dive on into it. All right, folks, so Cover Your Assets here is a card game. All you've got is cards in the box and the instructions. Hopefully you'll be able to throw away the instructions after this video, you'll know how to play. So let's take a look at what cards we've got in here. You can see these all have different titles and then different values on them. So we have the most expensive is gold right here. Gold and silver are wilds, which we'll explain and show you how those work in a little bit. But gold is the most expensive Thing in the game at $50,000. Then we've got silver at $25,000. We've got the home at $20,000. We have classic, uh, classic auto and jewels both at $15,000. We have coin collection, bank account, and stocks at $10,000. And then we have cash under the mattress, baseball cards, stamp collection, and piggy bank at 5,000. So what you're trying to do, the goal of this game is just to score as many points as you can. So we've seen that, we're gonna go ahead and just push these aside so we've got a little more room to work here. You're gonna deal everyone five cards. So shuffle up all the cards and then deal five cards to everyone. You are not going to start with a card here. I just put that out to show you one of the actions. So you're not gonna start with a discard, but at different points in the game you may need to take that action so there will be some discards out here later on you just don't start with that so that's one note to make also there's a couple of piles over here representing someone who's already uh, started their collection again just to show you actions everyone's just going to start with five cards in hand so action number one is if you have two cards that are the same you can use those and create a set create a pair so if we have these two piggy banks we're going to go ahead and stack those together and we're going to create our very first stack so that's what you do and then you could collect cards back to fill yourself up to five now let's say it comes around to our turn again. We got some great cards because we could make a pair here, or if we wanted to, we've got two different actions. So with the coin collection, if you uh, want to make a pair with the discard that's on top, you could do that. So we could take these two cards, make a pair, and every new stack you're gonna stagger. So we're gonna stagger back and forth. Now I'm going to instead show you a different action. If I wanted to, I could take that and just make a pair with it, or I could go over here and I could try to steal this coin collection from them. So you can only ever steal what is on top of someone's stack, the very top. So because the autos are under here, we couldn't steal those, they are covered. So that is what you're trying to do is cover your assets so that they can't steal uh, anything except what's on top. So anything underneath except the top. The top is the only one you can steal, so we're going to attempt to steal. We're going to say, I'm trying to steal your uh, coin collection here. Now, someone could basically try and defend that. And so you can defend it with the same card. So if they played a coin collection, they could say, no, I'm going to try and defend it. And then if we wanted to, we could play either another coin collection or a wild and say, no, I'm going to try and steal it. And if they don't have anything else or don't want to, then we would end up winning that fight. We would take all of those cards right there and put them on our stack like so. Now you can never steal the very bottom from someone. And so if you by happen chance, stance, had a silver or gold, it may be a decent strategy to at the beginning of the game say, oh, I'm going to pretend we didn't have these. Let's just say we had those in our starting hand. We'd have five cards, but let's say those were two of them. We could take the bank account and put it over the gold so that no one knows it's gold. You can do this throughout the game, by the way. Uh, but we could take that and just put it down as our first one. And no one would be able to steal that because it's on the very, very bottom. So we're starting out with 60k, which is very good. You might want to keep gold in your hand for something else, or you may just want to put it down to make sure that it is safe. So at any time in the game, when you're making one, you could use that gold as a wild and you can keep it hidden with your hand. That is probably a good strategy. You don't want people to know you have it. Um, but if you're putting it on the bottom, you could put it on top just to flaunt your wealth if you wanted to. Also not necessarily recommended, but you could. 
if we wanted to, we could use a wild, the silver or uh, gold, to go and try and steal from people like we did before. Or we could make a pair with what is already there. So those are the main actions. If at any point in the game, let's say we had these five cards and they're all different, and let's say it's the beginning of the game and there's nothing out there that we can take. We've got these five cards right here. They're all different. What we could do is say, you know, let's discard this card, the piggy bank. It's not worth as much. And then we'll just draw one card. And there you go. Next turn, we'll be able to connect these two classic autos. So that is how the game works. You're just going to take one of those actions every single turn, go around in a circle and continue to get yourself back up to five every single time. So if we do uh, make a pair for one of our actions, if we take these two, for instance, and make ourselves a pair like that, then we would take two cards because we used two cards. So that is the way that Cover Your Assets goes. The game is going to end when this deck is out. And so when you get to the very end, let's say we take the last card. There we go, we've replenished our hand. Everyone's gonna play as many actions as they can. If you can't, you just skip and you can't replenish your hand. You could still take a card out here if there is one. But we, for instance, could take the cash on the mattress, make a pair just like that. Then we could do nothing. There's nothing else we could do, so the only thing we'd be able to do is take the discarded card over here and put that over there. And it would just keep on cycling through uh, until everyone cannot go and that would be the game you're going to count up your total that you have in all of your stacks and then uh, the official rules if you want to play multiple rounds the first person to become a millionaire wins if you want to just play a few rounds or one round of course you're welcome to do that as well but that is cover your assets hopefully that lets you know all of the rules of how to play all right folks let's get into some tips to help you beat your friends, score some more points, and cover your assets better. So a couple of things that I will mention, sometimes you may have a pair. Let's say we got a couple of these cards right here. We've got two of these coin collections. You might not want to make a pair every single time. So what I mean is, is, is someone else has a coin collection out there, uh, it may be a really nice strategy to go and try and steal it from them. And then you've got a secondary card that you can use for that battle. And so it may be worth uh, using your cards in that sort of efficiency as well. Another thing you're going to want to keep in mind is uh, the game is called Cover Your Assets. You're wanting to cover the more expensive things as fast as you can. So if you're putting something uh, like a home down or the classic autos, uh, something that's you know, 15,000 or more, especially something that has silver or gold in it that people know about, try and cover that as fast as you can so that people aren't going for it as heavy. If you cover um, a silver or gold with a piggy bank, people probably aren't gonna fight for that as much maybe. And so that's something to keep in mind, try and cover your assets as fast as you can. Um, but on the flip side of that, don't neglect the lower, um, the lower priced stacks. So there's some of these that you know are worth five and ten thousand and a lot of times people will not put as much into those because they're not worth as much but if you are able to pursue those you might be able to get more points because you have a bunch of them or something like that. At the end of the game though people do kind of look at your stack and they're like you've got a huge stack we got to get him and so on the flip side it might be a good strategy to try and keep your stack smaller but more expensive. So hopefully that helps. Another thing is with the wilds, with the silver and gold, just use those really, really wisely. You can use those for anything, obviously. And so a good strategy many, many times is to take something that's really not very valuable. So take a piggy bank like so, and then put a wild behind it. So the other players don't have to know that that's there. So say, oh, I'm doing the piggy banks and then just drop them down nonchalantly they'll think, hey, that, that's not worth pursuing. But if they know that there's something under there that's worth 25 or 50,000, they're probably going to try and steal it from you. Uh, another thing is just the timing of when to steal, when not to steal. If you see two people having a big battle over, um, let's say, the coin collection. Let's say they got a big battle going over the coin collection, they throw a bunch of cards out, 
now might be your time if you have the coin collection to go over there and try and try and win that yourself because they just expended a lot of their resources for it probably so that is one other thought on that overall um, I think those are my main tips I think those are all the good good ones that I'd say be really mindful of the wilds that is the biggest one I think in this game try and hide those tuck them away as much as you can and for goodness gracious sakes cover your assets hopefully that gives you some tips so you can have a little more fun and do a little bit better on your next game thanks